Let me walk to the banks of the river of love yeah, yeah. Where the current runs deep Baptized in the one yeah, yeah. Where there's no separation And the light is always safe Honor ain't got a difference Says and love will set us free. Oh, oh, Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. I said, Oh, you rock my soul. I said. Oh, you rock my soul. I see the um, blessings of the past. It's time to requalify. Yeah, yeah. Let's not forget, but learn to forgive. God knows we gotta try. It's my responsibility to heal the wounds in me. Compassion, faith, and hope, and love, and truth will set us free. Oh, Father, Father, God, there's a healing going on. Father, Father, God, there's a healing going on. Father, Father, God, there's a healing going on. I said, oh, you rock my soul. I said, oh, you got my soul. Oh, Lord, I said, Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. I said, oh, you got my soul, oh, you rock my soul, I said, oh, you rock my Good morning, good day, whatever time it is, wherever it is that you are, and Happy New Year. <laughs> oh, this is the first Sunday of 2021. Woo! <laughs> Did 2020 seem like the longest year in history? It's going to go down as an era all by itself. Oh, and we're here. Let's just take a deep breath. Thank you, Mother, Father, God, for having brought us from such a mighty long way. I'd like to acknowledge Jamie Lula for that opening song. Uh, sometimes we joke, you know, I'm, I'm his sister from another mister, and he's my brother from another mother, uh, hailing from uh, Los Angeles. We always appreciate uh, his, mu his music. Welcome. Welcome to Inner Light Ministries. <sighs> Let's just breathe in this new year, huh? Let's just breathe it in. We're starting something new. We began it uh, last week. And in case you haven't heard the word yet, there is a virtual engagement that's going on. Even now as I speak. You'll see there are links that are available right there on the screen or wherever it is that you are on your Facebook or whatever platform that you're using. If you want to watch this with other people in community, you can do that. And in about 25 minutes or so, um, when I complete with the message, uh, we're going to get our praise on. Heather Houston is our musical inspiration. Uh, so we'll go off of this live platform and we'll go into the Zoom gathering and then you can we can see each other and we can talk. We can do um, meet and greet 
And there'll even be a time where you get in breakout groups and you can talk a little bit about the message and what's coming up for you and what you're growing edge with it and, and your own testimonies. So it's our time to recreate kind of like a virtual sanctuary. And what's extra special, doubly new, is not only do we have the virtual engagements that you can join at any time, you can get into it now or right after this, um, there's also an encore. So at 4 p.m. on Sundays, that specific time, 7 p.m. Eastern time, this message that you're hearing now will air again in our Zoom gathering, and you'll have a chance to get together with a whole nother group of people. Or perhaps you missed the morning one and you want to do it later. Uh, we're trying to make it flexible in terms of the hours and very, very um, accessible. It kicked off the last Sunday of 2020. It was big fun. I invite you to uh, partake of that. Our theme this month of January, 2021, is intent, intent. And my topic for today is a powerhouse of promise, a powerhouse of promise. You know, every week we always feature these affirmations. They are really energetic activations that help to recalibrate us. So we're going to bring some on the screen to help set the tone for today. The power house of promise. So I invite you to read along with me. There's no such thing as an ordinary moment. Every moment thrives with unique opportunities for growth and wholeness. I give myself to embody this extraordinary moment. Every decision is a choice. Every thought a vote. I determine the focus of my attention. I determine the interpretation of the matters at hand. I create my experience by the narrative I choose to replay in my psyche. I open wide to all the healing, revealing, and transformation that awaits me every day. No more collusion with judgment, lack, or playing small. I am a powerhouse of promise, potential, and possibility. <sighs> Just breathe that in. You know, at this time of the year, the beginning of the year, so many of us are setting goals. We're making New Year's resolutions, all kind of promises about things that we want to do or we don't want to do. But intent is not a goal. Intent is not some external thing out there that you try to create or try to make happen. In fact, your intent arrives before you do. Intent is an inside job. Intent is a place of integration. Intent is that place where we bring it all together. Where we bring into alignment our thoughts, our emotions, our ideas, our actions, our beliefs, our words, where we line them up so that they're all going in the right direction. And we couple this alignment with a pure motivation so that the reason why we're moving in the direction that we're moving is of pure heart. 
This place of integration is an alignment of our thought and our word and our deed and our emotions and our actions, our motivations. And it also brings into alignment the processes that we use. The processes that we use. Too often, we don't think enough about that. But the end result is contained within the process that you use. I want to say that again, the end result is contained within the process that you use. The process has to be consistent with where it is that you feel like you're going. You can't arrive at unconditional loving with hate in your heart. You can't create a democracy by suppressing votes, by dissension and not having room for public discourse. I I do professional conflict resolution. And one of the things that I'll tell people sometimes in the group situations is that you have a decision to make right now. Before we actually do anything, you have a decision that you have to make. Do you want a relationship with this person or this group of people or not? Do you want to work with them or not? That's a decision that you have to make up front. Because if you kill them in the process of it, then they're not there in the back end to have the relationship with Our intent is a place of integration. It's an internal job. Sometimes we think of it as the difference between doing and being. But I want to stretch it a little bit further. Because so often I find that even in our quest to be something, we're trying to figure out, well, what do I need to do to be it? (laughs) Think of intent as a process of revealing. It's an inside job. And there's something that you're revealing. Just like in the natural world, we have a periodic table of elements where everything is created out of it. It's some kind of combination of these elements. We have them within our body temple. There's minerals within our very body. We have essentially a spiritual periodic table of elements. We refer to them as spiritual qualities. Sometimes we attribute these things to the divine. We think of them as godly. But it's who you are. Think about that for a second. Everything that we ascribe to the divine is who we are by nature. Because we've come out of it. Just like everything within our physical body comes out of the earth. From Adam. Which means literally reddish color. Earth, from the Adama, from the earth. Adam is earth being. We're earth beings from the mother earth. And such as we are spiritual beings. We're in this world, but we're not of here. We're not from here. So every spiritual quality that you can possibly think of is who you are. And everything that we see in the outer world is just some combination of these spiritual qualities. But we're all of them. You hear me say over and over again that the only thing that ever needs to be healed is just the sense of separation. The difficulty here is that we don't relate to the spiritual qualities as who we are. We don't think of them as our very identity. So we're busy trying to chase after them. I'm I'm chasing after that relationship to give love. I'm I'm chasing after that job for economic security. I'm I'm chasing after this career over here because I, I, I think it's going to make me creative. Oh, no, 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 no. It's the other way around. 
It's who you are. So let this sink in for a moment. It's who you are. So as you're writing your goals, as you're writing your resolutions, don't make it just about getting things or acquiring things. Make your resolution about revealing your truth, revealing more of the who you are. What you're looking for, you're looking with. So all that stuff out there that you think you're trying to get, or you think you're trying to manifest, ask yourself, what is the spiritual quality behind that? And claim that as the truth of who you are. So you are the balance. You are the order. You are the prosperity. You are the wholeness. You are the joy. You are the peace. You are the power, the trust, the truth, the clarity, the focus, the creativity, the passion. You are the willingness. You are the patience. It's who you are. Just breathe that in. It's who you are. Our charge is to reveal it. Our charge is to so identify with it that we let it pour out of us. You know, this year, 2020, that we just came out of it, whew, it was a year. Nobody can come out of this year the same person that went into that year. We've been tested. We've been tried. There's been so much that's gone on. The COVID-19 virus, and whether it's been illness, the economic fallout, even just the social distancing and not being able to be in community, me here talking to you on a screen and, and us not being in our, in our, in our sanctuary. There's so many things that have happened. But don't make yourself just a victim of 2020. What 2020 has done is it has helped each and every one of us to tap in to aspects about ourselves and things about ourselves that we didn't know before or that perhaps we've underestimated. Perhaps you found more flexibility within yourself than you ever thought that you had. Maybe you've tapped into deeper levels of courage as you've been able to face the unknown. Maybe you've tapped into new levels of resilience, capacities to bounce back. Maybe you found new levels of compassion within yourself, of caring, or being stirred into participating in social protest or things that are about making sure that our democratic process is, a well, is well and strong. Maybe you've tapped into some creativity Maybe it just came from pure boredom. <laughs> you were looking for ways to entertain yourself. <laughs> Who knows? But what I'm asking you to do right now is as you're moving into 2021, build on those. Build on it. Because it's a greater revelation of you. You are a powerhouse of promise. And part of what this COVID virus has done, it has helped us tap into our promise so that we can see that we are greater than what we thought that we were. That a lot of things that we thought we just couldn't live without, well, we're getting a taste of that. Ways where we couldn't find new ways of doing things because it just had to be this way because this is the way we were accustomed to doing it. Well, 
Guess what? There are new things that are awaiting. So imagine now, if we didn't see ourselves as a victim of 2020, or we didn't see ourselves as a victim of COVID, imagine for a moment if we thought, hmm, you know what, in spite of all appearances and in spite of everything that's going on, all things are working together for my good. Who am I becoming here? What am I seeing? As we move forward into 2021, as this unusual time in history demands that we show up in ways that we haven't shown up before, it's calling on us to be more. It's calling on us to stretch and to grow. No more comfort in the comfort zone. And what I can tell you, particularly with the social political times that are ahead of us, all over the world, and especially right here in the United States, especially like this month in January, as we inaugurate a new administration into the White House and the Electoral College finally gets sealed and all the other various things that are, that, that are going on, it's going to require us to show up a little bit stronger, a little bit wiser, a little bit more determined, a little bit more ready, a little more grace, a little bit more ease a little bit more love, a little bit more collegiality in our hearts. What I know for certain is that times like this bring things out in us. Sometimes it's things that we knew, but just kind of tucked away. Sometimes it's things that we're shocked about. What I know for certain is that our being here is no accident. And each and every one of us is here for such a time as this. That phrase is something that I use often. But I want to give you the context of that to help you see what I mean when I say that we are a powerhouse of promise. That phrase actually comes from Hebrew scripture, from the book of Esther. Esther was a very beautiful woman and her uncle Mordecai put her up to be one of the people that might be chosen to be a bride of the king. And she fact was chosen. However, she was hiding the fact that she was Jewish. She was in the closet about being a Jew. Well, let's just say some stuff was about to go down that wasn't looking so good for the Jewish people. And Mordecai goes to Esther and begs her to come out of the closet to let her husband, the king, know that she was Jewish. To wield the influence and the privilege that she had from that amount of close access. And he says to her, perhaps, perhaps you are here in this position now with this kind of access for such a time as this. And so it is for each and every one of us. There are gifts that we've been sitting on. We've been closeted. We haven't always been telling the truth about who we are. Most of us are squelching our authenticity a little bit because we're afraid that 
well, we're not quite sure how we're going to be seen or, or we're not going to be sure if we're going to be rejected. Well, let me tell you something about the closet that I am intimately familiar with. We say that we're in the closet because of what we think other people's reaction to us is going to be because we're afraid of their rejection. We're closeted because we're afraid of our own rejection. Listen to what I'm saying. It isn't that we're closeted because we think other people aren't going to appreciate the fullness of who we are. We're not appreciating the fullness of who we are. We're sitting on it. And I'm asking you now to whatever that is within you, whatever that's been calling you. I, I tell people COVID has shattered all of my plan. But you know what? My dreams are starting to come true. <laughs> my dreams are starting to come true. Even now in this format, reaching so many more people than we would have reached if we had just still been in the sanctuary. I don't know what your gifts are. I don't know what your talents are. But if you make your intent about revealing those, if you make your intent about letting you out, then I promise you what you will unleash will be so much more and greater than whatever stuff you think you're chasing after to bring into your life. You are a powerhouse of promise. There are things that you have discovered about yourself. Build on those. Use those. I, I, I'm, I'm so tickled. A former in-law of mine um, lost her job, job she really loved due to COVID. And you know what she's doing now? She's baking bread. She's baking bread, which actually was a family tradition, like a family profession and loving it. You, you, you may not have the job that you used to have, you, you may not be able to do all the things that you were doing before, but 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 within there, what, what, within you is everything that you need for whatever's next. Stop bemoaning what you don't have. Stand in the power and the truth of what you do have. This is what I'm inviting you into. This new season, this new year starts with a new you. <laughs> it reminds me of the, the popular song when I was growing up. Does anybody really know what time it is? Does anybody really care? It's a new year by whose calendar? It, it, it's a new year whenever you say it's a new year. But it doesn't matter how new something is on the calendar. If you show up the same old person that you used to be. Now is the anointed time. Now is the appointed time. There is something within you. That just wants to reveal itself. And I am encouraging you. To give it your yes. Don't worry about how everybody else is going to think about it. Don't worry about all what you're going to do with it or how it's going to fit in with everything else. You say yes to you. You say yes to you. Just breathe that in for a moment. Hmm. Oh, we're just getting started here today. As I mentioned at the beginning, that there are Zoom watch parties that are going on. And I invite you to jump on into one. 
There's links that are, are right there and I will join you there momentarily. We're gonna be getting our praise on and singing with Heather Houston. I say thank you for all of the year in contributions and all of the donations that have been coming in on your screen. You'll see there's opportunities for you to donate there. You can go to paypal.me slash ministries. Um, you can also do text to give at 831-667-5051. Just follow the things that are on your screen there um, and in the chats. And know that your contributions, your contributions are going and helping to keep this ministry not just afloat, but thriving into our greater yet to be. It has been so wonderful and incredible being with you this morning, our time morning, this afternoon, four o'clock will be an encore Pacific time. So tell your friends, if you can't join in on the virtual engagement right now, see you now or see you this afternoon as we take this consciousness and multiply it.